the 2023 season kicks off on Thursday, and we're thrilled. We are looking forward to that so much. But before any regular season action can go down on the field, we have to put our names to statements, pulling out all of our biggest predictions for the season. Every day this week, it's our predictions. <laughs> for our first predictions, ooh, look at that crystal ball. For our first predictions, we are going to talk offensive rookie of the year. One and Peter, kick us off. Get loose, get loose. Um, There were three quarterbacks taken in the first round. Mm -hmm. All three of these guys are going to start. There were several different wide receivers selected. All are going to have wonderful NFL Mm -hmm. players. But there's only one player that I decided to start the show with on our first week back from multiple (laughs) weeks of vacation. It was July 24th, I believe, and... We had just started training camp, and it was back to football weekend. Said you could talk about anything you want in the league. Rodgers is in New York. Russell Wilson's with Sean Payton. What do you want to talk about, Peter? I said, we're starting it off with this guy because all I have heard is glowing reviews, and the way he's being used might create a new position in the football world. Mm. A new position, I mean a positionless player that we have not seen before from the running back spot. Uh, With no further ado, the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year will be Lions rookie, Jameer Gibbs! Okay, Jameer! Jameer Gibbs is my choice. I think he's gonna be used at running back. I think he's gonna be used at wide receiver. I think the Lions are gonna be really good. I think they're gonna be on primetime a lot. And I think Gibbs is going to be outstanding. I called one of their preseason games. The announcers were with me going nuts because of his pass protection, his smart play out there, his cerebral nature. Uh, This is a guy who I think honestly can run for a thousand yards and Oh, I don't want to say a thousand. I think he can have 500 yards receiving. Mm. I think they're gonna use him in a lot of ways David Montgomery might still be the lead back But I think Gibbs is going to be the guy that we're gonna all be going like this about every single week Uh, There's been a ton of hype this offseason ton of hype this summer. I think he lives up to it. Jameer Gibbs is my pick for offensive rookie. Of- I like it. Ooh, I like it. It's you know what else I like saw- about prediction week is that like you basically just said also that you think the lines are going to be good. Prime you time. ain't getting rookie Prime of the year time. and you're six and five 10, and twelve teams 11. don't win offensive. Prime time, of the baby. Year. No. Okay. What I love no. is that you put dates on it. You went back to July. Like this isn't new. I didn't just come yeah. up with no. this. This isn't my fantasy football friends telling me no, 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 no. This <laughs> comes with good. No doubt about it. I'm going to give you a date, too. September 3rd, 2022, a year ago, is when I picked my offensive rookie year. I was in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, watching a college game, just out there to see my alma mater. And next thing I know, there was this player on the other side who just was absolutely balling. Ten catches, 117 yards, two touchdowns in the college game. I'm like, who is this kid? He can absolutely play. He needs to be in the NFL at some point. That was Boston College's Zay Flowers. Let's go! The wide receiver was unbelievable. And now he's a member of the Baltimore Ravens. Quarterback Lamar Jackson will be looking for this guy to get the rock in his hands. You talk about playing on primetime. You talk about storylines. You talk about the quarterback, the wide receiver on the other side, and Odell Beckham Jr. We're going to see a lot of Zay Flowers. His teammates have already nicknamed him Joystick. And the actual human joystick has already given him the name. Dante, oh, he said it's okay. They can call him that. It's a little bit different. Great storyline. And you talk about winning games. Baltimore is going to be good. They're going to be playing against a lot of good opponents in their division. I can't wait to watch Zay go off. Zay Flowers is my offensive rookie of the year. Let's go. The hype is real. The hype is real. That'd be really, really cool. A Ravens receiver. Mm. Time to be alive. All right, you said you had a date. You had a date. I got a date for you. I got a year. The year 1967. Okay. 1967 is the first year they gave out the Associated Press Offensive Rookie of the Year. Peter, it was a Lions running back. Mm. It was Mel Farr, a.k.a. Superstar Mel Farr out of UCLA. (laughs) Rookie of the Year. Why do I bring up that year? Because in that entire run since 1967, we have never had something happen that I believe is going to happen this year. Guys, we're going to make history. For the first year ever in the history of the AP, AP Offensive Player, the Rookie of the Year, we're going to have a tight end. The name is Dalton. What? Dalton oh. Kincaid of the Buffalo Bills is going to become the first ever tight end to win Rookie of the Year. Not Jeremy Shockey. None of those. Not Mark Bavaro. None of them. This is what I call sand to the beach. 
The Bills go up and down the field on offense. They had a Pro Bowl tight end, and they said, no, we need him. He's that good. He's that unguardable. If you're going to be a tight end to win Offensive Rookie of the Year in a year where a bunch of quarterbacks are starting and a bunch of receivers are starting and no tight end has ever done it, you got to give me 70 catches, 12 touchdowns. you got to have moments. you got to have primetime mm-hmm. moments. Dalton Kincaid makes history first ever tight end to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, my prediction. Love it. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. Oh, come on. We're in. Let's go. Oh. Starts Monday night against the Jets, MetLife Stadium. Let's go. Kyle, I really like the jersey you're wearing today. What's up, boss? I you believe like, now? I you like, believe now? We're here. We come it. I have something that I believe we're in. Here. I like my rookies to have zest. Yes. To have spice. Mm-hmm. To have personality and to have their own mustard name after them. Okay. I like a player to know so confidently that he is going to create a ripple effect in the NFL that he is able to carry his college nickname of Smiley over from the University of Texas mm-hmm. to the Atlanta Falcons. I like my offensive rookie of the year to be running back Bijan. Here we go. Bijan. Put him up. The Falcons, you are my friend this season. I am just continuing <laughs> to say that Bijan Robinson. An electric prospect coming out of Texas. We didn't see a lot of Bijan Robinson in the preseason, but that's how I like it. There is mystery there. The GM for the Falcons, Terry Fontenot, singing Robinson's praises last week. He has an intensity about him. Everyone sees that nice smile, but he can lock in, Kyle, and go to a dark place. I love it. That's what Fontenot said. Guy. Goes to a dark place. Like he that. can lock in, get the job done on the in the building, on the practice field. He has a rare maturity, but he can flip that switch and go to work. Bijan Robinson, Go to work. He is my offensive rookie of the year. I like it. And again, you are basically saying, Jamie, you think the Falcons are winning some games this year. Just like Peter did with the Lions. I just noticed last year, obviously, a wide receiver won it. Usually this is a quarterback's award. None of us put our eggs in the baskets of any of these quarterbacks. Is there a chance that we're laughing in a couple weeks and say, how do we not pick? (sighs) C.J. Stroud. Richardson. Richardson Richardson running all over the place. Maybe we'll look foolish. Maybe we'll look smart. Exactly. Um, Here are our picks. Uh, Our first, our kickoff to prediction week. It is Good Morning Football's 2023 Offensive Rookie of the Year predictions. Like Peter Schrager said, he has been on the Jameer Gibbs train. You you go all in early on. You got to get but Peter, one of the, you know, David Montgomery, I can be the lead back if this is the guy offense we're here. Don't tell me any of that stuff. This guy's taking over. I said he might be. He could be a goal line back, maybe. But it's been wide receiver two years in a row. Chase yep. won it the year right. before. Mm-hmm. So Jay's the only guy who took wide out. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel great. Dalton Kincaid, over a thousand yards this season? That's what you're yes, saying. Yes, yes. I'm thinking a thousand yards tight end. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. I just predicted him to be offensive for the first time in history. Ooh. Yes. A thousand Love yards. It. Yes. Wonder I'm just looking. Uh, we roll on with prediction week, and it is time now to make our picks for this year's coach of the year. Last year didn't go great. That's fine. Let's redeem ourselves. Peter, one to correct your ways. Um, Confidence too. Okay, so I picked Hackett last year. Last year, and now my <laughs> premise was that the Broncos were going to be back. It didn't work out. Hackett was fired 15 games into mm-hmm. the season. Didn't exactly stand as the best. Uh, Jimmy Buffett passed away this mm. weekend. Jimmy Buffett was a pirate, okay? I feel like there's one pirate left in the coaching ranks, and that pirate also is the new coach for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> You're doubling down. I'm doubling no. down on the Broncos <laughs> being back. And I'm going with Sean Payton, the league's last pirate, the renegade, uh. the maverick. Oh, this coach, this man right here, he signed the NFL's first coaching super max contract. Mm. They brought him out of retirement, and they're paying him to be that guy. I think the Broncos, if you're picking coach of the year, you're saying this team's a playoff team. I think the Broncos are Peter, a playoff wow, team. Wow, I love oh it. God. Russ is balling. Then. I think Russ is, well, or Stiddy. I don't know who's the quarterback. <laughs> Someone is balling at quarterback. That was your MVP last but year. But Sean Payton will be the coach. You better believe uh, in the shadow of the passing of the great Jimmy Buffett, I am taking a true pirate right. and a true renegade and a man who knows Mother Ocean. I am going with Sean Payton, and I'm all in. So I, I just love the confidence. After you were up there. We showed a clip. You picked the thing. Then you doubled down. And you did it with confidence. I don't yeah. know if I believe you. I'm going to go <laughs> with a guy that is rocking a new look this year. It's a new look, a new him, and the confidence is just coming off the screen whenever you see him. Yes, he is rocking the stash. Kyle, get ready. Oh! He's going to be rocking it as well. I am going with Arthur wow, Smith, you're the, the head Falcons. coach of the Atlanta Falcons. You see it right there. It's giving him just newfound belief in himself whenever he looks at 
in the mirror when he wakes up and he sees that stash looking back at him. He just knows he can coach his butt off. Yes, he's going to take a Desmond Ritter-led team, going to get Kyle Pitts back going, rookie Bijan Robinson. I'm going all in on Arthur Smith. That means Atlanta Falcons are going to be good. May even win that division. Arthur Smith, let's get it done. Coach of the year. I like it. I'm proud of you. I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking like, wow, the, the Broncos, the Falcons to the mm. playoffs? Uh, they didn't say it, but it, it is heavily inferred. I, I approached this coach of the year prediction logically. Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta think about the starting point of where this coach is coming from. Andy Reid is probably not going to be able to win coach of the year this yeah. year. Mike Tom is going to have a very difficult time because it's about the leap that you make. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm talking about an all-time leap, a leap from having at one point the number one overall pick in the draft and this year, absolutely turning everything around. Guys, the coach of the year is going to be Matt Eberflus from Chicago Bears. Okay. The Flus is loose. <laughs> you remember, they lost about 30 games in a row last year. They had the number one pick. They traded it for DJ Moore at all. You know who that man is? Would you recognize him at the beat? Would you stop him in the mall and say, I heard you the head coach of the Bears? You will after this year. Anybody scoffing at this? The Bears aren't going to win. Bears had a coach of the year just a few years ago. Just a few years ago, I think, with a lesser quarterback and a lesser roster. Matt Eber, Les Flus. Good morning, Lake Forest, Illinois. The Flus is loose. That is your coach of the year. I Flus said it. Is loose. I probably wouldn't stop him in the mall to say, are you, but I would say, sick Jordans, right? Like, doesn't he have a pretty good collection? He's got a little sauce on the Flus. Yes, he does. A little sauce. Flus juice, Never hurt. if you will. Um, I am one who is drawn to coaches of authenticity, mm -hmm. men that stay true to themselves no matter where they are in their playing career or their coaching career, one that takes on various nicknames as they go. But the nickname that this coach originated with back in college, Dantalica? Oh. To the dude? <laughs> to MCDC? I'm talking Good. about Motor City Dan Campbell. Wow. Dan hey. Campbell, my Detroit yeah. Lions right. coach of the year. This guy is great. As Kyle said, years, but can he coach? I believe he can. Will he coach? I think he'll do all the job this year for the Detroit Lions. He coach. The NFC North is a tricky division. My heart looks at it in very different ways. He did, but I do believe the Lions are going to have a hell of a year. How one goes, still up for grab. Gonna have, but it is an 18-week season to earn Coach of the Year, and Dan Campbell is my candidate. Jamie, you say 18 weeks, but I love this prediction because this is squashed in three days. If they lose and get creamed on <laughs> Thursday night, he is not winning Coach of the Year, even if they do get to the playoffs. Well, That's a big showpiece. He's got to win that game for Then you. I can just rely on the rest of my prediction week. Sure. Uh, all right. I, you got to take some shots. I love it. Peter, break it down. What do you think? I love this. It's it's everything our show is about. It's swings, it's big shots, and it's not what I expected from any of you guys. Uh, gosh, uh, we are a very, very pro Lions and Falcons show this morning. Mm -hmm. I am wondering if those are going to be the picks you guys make this when it course. comes to picking some prediction into division winners. The same division right there for Coach of the Year. Yeah, 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 that's true. I'm just waving at the month of January when we play this back. Oh. Say hi to January, everybody. Hi, it's hi, January. One. Love you, 2024. Hi, yep. I'm thrilled. Uh, but before any regular season action can go down on the field, we are making statements here on Good Morning Football. Biggest predictions for the season. Every day this week, it's our prediction week. A little trademark in the back end. Kyle, I saw you tweet that. Uh, earlier, we shared our picks for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Not a single quarterback, Kyle, on this board. Yeah, we, we, we zagged. I picked a tight end. It's never happened in history. Mm -hmm. One receiver. It's the last two years in a row have been receivers. And we got a couple of running backs. A Lions running back and a Falcon. This is prediction week. We let our hair down. We think what's going to happen. And we let it rip. Jay, you were on the Zay Flowers bandwagon a year ago because you saw him play. September 3rd, 2022. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Boston College taking on Rutgers. Rutgers won the game, but Zay Flowers was amazing. Always important to get that fact in. Uh, now we're going to move to the other side of the ball. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Peter, the Jameer Gibbs, we feel like we saw that come in from late July. Not sure where you're going to go here. I got Jack Campbell? For a loop. Potentially we go oh, two lines. Maybe oh it's Brian Branch, the other Lions. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. big. Uh, I'm going to New Orleans. Oh. Do you guys know who Brian Brzee is? Sure. Brian Brzee was the number one high school recruit coming out of high school, goes to Clemson, <laughs> has some real, real adversity in his college career, including the death of family members, including some sideways situations where he was not exactly uh, expected to be at his best. Fo He's in a great place right now. Brian Brzee lit up preseason. He had a spin move against the Texans on that Sunday night game from the defensive tackle position. I look at what Brzee is walking into. Brian Brzee is walking into a defense that has Cam Jordan, 
that has Lattimore, that has all of these stars on there, and they're telling him, you just be you in the middle. I think the Saints are going to be a force to be reckoned with on defense this year, and I think Brian awesome. Brzee, their first-round pick, is going to shock everybody and will be the defensive rookie of the year. I hear you, Saints fans. You're saying you're not talking about us enough. Talk about them now. Talking about you right now. Brian, Brian Brzee is my defensive I'm rookie of the year. It's good. I love it. Brian Brzee, you talk about the surrounding guys, the supporting cast around him, which will allow him to just go out there and play free. I want to talk about a young man that when he was in college, he was a breaking records. You could nickname him just Mr. Pick six, and the draft comes up, and all everybody wants to talk about is his frame. He's only 170 pounds. Can he go out there? Can he tackle people? I'm going down the road. I pick Zay Flowers for Baltimore. Now we're going to D.C. to Washington Commanders, Emmanuel Forbes. Emmanuel that Forbes. is going to be my defensive wow. rookie of the year. I think his front, you have Chase Young, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Montez Sweat. Those guys are going to put a ton of pressure on quarterbacks. Going to throw the ball up in the air. Who better to have than Emmanuel Forbes to pluck the ball out of the sky and find the end zone? You want a rookie of the year? Get a guy out there, lock down. I know Sauce Gardner won it last year. Get another long rangy guy, skinny, Emmanuel Forbes this year. 16th pick by the Commanders going out there getting it done. Rookie of the year on the defensive side of the ball. It's pretty cool. I like seeing that Commanders logo. It's fresh. We're going new directions. Mm -hmm. We got a corner. You mentioned Sauce. Last defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. <laughs> last one was a St. Louis Ram out of Pittsburgh. Yep. Aaron Donald was the yep. last time this happened. Ooh. I'm going to go somewhere dramatically different. And Jason, you know, you are a guy who played in the league most recently, mm -hmm. but uh, you are not the member of the table who has taken an NFL hit most recently. That would be me, and that brings us to our pick. Uh -oh. It is a giant, giant, giant uh, ch chaser of men that had us. We are at the table here, and um, we thought he was going to go with the Arizona Cardinals. He was going to get drafted that high. It turns out it was the Las Vegas Raiders, and this is the moment that I knew this would be the defensive rookie of the year. Go ahead. Uh, guys, um, Arizona is on the clock at number three. Uh, I'm going to come up. Hold on. Okay. I'm Burkhart. Here we go. <laughs> How we doing, Cardinals fans? All right, let them hear you. <laughs> With the Woo! number three pick oh in the gosh. 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Tyree Wilson, outside linebacker, defensive end, Texas Tech. Yes, he did it. He made it. Give him the. Oh! <laughs> My lumbar is in my throat. <laughs> oh, that's a powerful man. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, that was wow. awesome. That was great. That was I need a cigarette. Great. That really happened. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tyree Wilson from the Las Vegas Raiders. He did not go to Arizona at three. He went to the Raiders at seven. Yep. And there's the moment right there when my little baby legs are wrapped around him 20 feet <laughs> off the ground. Peter's running from the table. Jamie's and singling I mean, touchdown. Height. I know. And both. And a natural <laughs> high. Look how high off the ground my bottom is. And then we saw just a little glimpse of right. him on the field. And we're like, oh, my gosh, Tyree Wilson is the strongest man of all time. We know about Crosby on the other side. Here he was in the preseason just showing up and pushing a 350-pounder into the 20th row. Guys, look out. He was, he was paid, drafted, and employed to chase Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson. I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to have double-digit sacks and then some. Mm, I love this guy. Double-digit sacks. Tyree Wilson of the Las Vegas Raiders, my defensive rookie of the I love year. love it. The Raiders. And it was such a thrill to watch that. Glorious. Game. I loved it. So it was nervous for you and excited and scared all at one time. That's why I jumped out of my Yeah, seat, I he think felt the same us. way. He felt all the same thing. <laughs> so great. Um, may I take you back to 2006? Please do. Okay. Uh, the draft pick out of Alabama. It's actually the first draft pick in the second round out of Alabama. Goes to the Houston Texans. D'Amico Ryans was an outside linebacker mm. and a defensive end at Alabama. He goes to middle linebacker in his first season with the Texans. He follows a future Hall of Famer in Zach Thomas that year who had 165 tackles with his own 155 tackles as a rookie. D'Amico Ryans in 2006 was named defensive rookie of the year. What mm. is D'Amico Ryans doing now? He's coaching the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. And he has a player on his roster that he could maybe create history again mm. with and give that award himself, maybe at NFL Honors in February. I introduce you to somebody who needs an iron will this season as my defensive play rookie of the year. I feel like I had one of those childhoods where...
I experienced so much fun and love uh, in a household that you need as a child. My sister, she did a job of wiring me differently to be able to come here and with all these guys. Let's go. There he is, Ooh. Will Anderson, the youngest of five sisters out of the University of Alabama, a native of suburban Atlanta, Georgia. There he is, getting after the Dolphins in the preseason. He took out a – look out! Running back, took out the quarterback, chased that thing down, wearing number 51, could repeat in his head coach's history of earning defensive rookie of the year for the Houston Texans. Will Anderson, a friend, friend of the show, my defensive rookie. I love it. Well done. Well I, done. I got to call out the elephant in the room, guys. Yeah, I know That's great picks. Do it, do it, do it. The overall favorite, by leaps and bounds, everywhere you look, mm -hmm. plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. I figured one of you guys would Jaylen take Carter. Jalen Carter. Carter. You didn't take him? I didn't take him. Did you think him. about it? Of course I yeah, thought I about so. it. I There's so. a lot of talent on that Eagles team, though. Mm -hmm. I didn't think he would be a double-digit sack. You even went his same position. I think Brzee could be yeah. double digits. Oh. Yeah, look, you got to churn raw numbers to get the defensive rookie of the year. You got to have big-time sacks or interceptions or something. Yeah. Guys, I just love that we don't have, like, a Chief and a Packer and a Steeler. And, and we have Saints, Commanders, Raiders, Texans. This is awesome. This is why we do it. Exactly. Jay, how you feel? I feel good. I'm a DB, and I want to see a corner go out there and get yep. it. Saw set the tone last year. Forbes, follow it through. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Daniel Forbes story is fantastic. It's time for Wake Up Call, presented by Verizon. Prediction Week is here. We're living it on Good Morning Football. Uh, we're going to reveal our picks for league MVP later in the show. But right now, defensive side of the ball. Kyle, predict your defensive player of the year, please. Mm, I'd love to do that for okay, you. Okay, thank you. There's so many great players, so many choices, so many headliners. I think the big names, the favorites. Yep. We call it the one seed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with... Um, like an eight seed. Okay. It may be someone you're not expecting and someone you might be seeing very, very soon. I think the defensive player of the year is going to go tomorrow night against the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh. And I think it's going to be Aiden Hutchinson oh. the Detroit Lions. I believe in it. He did the Michael Jackson. He did the dance, but never mind that. He did the thing on the field last year. Sacks, interceptions, a huge part of their late season run. This is a second year massive leap that this guy's going to make. And guess what? I think it starts Thursday night in Arrowhead Stadium. I think he gets two I think sacks against Mahomes and Aiden Hutchinson is your leader and eventually your win for defensive play of the year. Guys, a mm. lion Huge. defensive player of the year. I love that guy. I think he gets it. I think I'll do that with Jamie and Jason. Nah, nah, I'm like, nah, nah. oh, he's talking about a Jersey boy. That's Frankie Valley Jersey boy. It's not Michael Jackson. I'm like, no, okay, I guess never mind. He's talking about Aiden Hutchinson. Sherry Baby. Sherry <laughs> Baby. Yes, I'm like, yes. all right, he's going with a jet. You see them? He uh, walks like a lion. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy who's tattooed head to toe, <laughs> NFL legends, boxing legends, and I know that they played the Rams in inner squad practices, and all oh. the Rams guys were like, this dude just absolutely dominated a lot of these games. Max Crosby Ooh. is my defensive player of the year. Max, contract situation, go ball, Max, all out, two X's on his name, one of my favorite players in the league, an absolute savage, and I think this Raiders team is going to be improved from last year, and I think the defense is going to be the biggest part. Max Crosby is going to get close to 20 sacks. I'm going him, my defensive player. I like Mad Max. Uh, uh, Peter, I'll take a cue off of what you thought Kyle was doing. I'm not going to sing uh, Sherry Baby, but I will say Quinn in. Quinn and Bay. Here we go. <laughs> Williams. Jamie. Quinn and Williams is going to be my defensive player of the year for the Jets. You know why? Because all he gets is sacks. 11. Did you see that one game? He had 11 sacks in the preseason. No, I don't know if it was that many, but that would do he's it. got That's charisma. He's got personality. He's probably going to amass like 47 sacks this season, if you ask him. Uh, he's got getting after it. He got paid this season. Jets are going to be really good. Quinn and Williams. And plus destroying just convinced me. I know, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. And now I get to go, get to go with the young out. people. Yeah, he had the most sacks in uh, joint practice history 11. where you're not allowed to touch the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. 11 sacks, 11. unbelievable. I'm going with a guy, you guys went under the I'm going with a guy at the very top of the list. I'm going with a guy that plays in Cleveland who is an absolute monster, who's a great mm -hmm. athlete. I'm going with Miles Garrett. I'm going with him because if you saw this guy chasing your quarterback, you'd be absolutely terrified. Your kids would be having nightmares. This is the guy I am going with. That is Vecna from Stranger yeah, Things. Is. That is Miles Garrett in his Halloween costume. That is what he embodies when he is out there on the football that field. Got to Miles ask. Garrett, Defensive Player of the Year, racking up sacks. Zadarius Smith is now the other side of him. I will get him more one-on-ones, 
Miles Garrett with Jim Brooks is his defensive coordinator. You said Max Crosby near 20 to 20 sacks. He's going to be close because Miles Garrett to have 20 sacks right above him oh. to win the defensive. Coordinator. There it is. There it is. Miles All right, we got a Lion, a Jet, a Brown, and a Raider. None of those uh, teams are playoff teams last year. And nobody year. in the secondary. Peter, you mentioned that. Speak on this historically. You do not have the Raiders in the playoffs. Nope. But you have Max Crosby. Is that possible? Is that yeah, if he gets those sacks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They don't, it's not like MVP, you don't have to make the playoffs. Uh, no. None of us pick Micah Parsons. None right. of us pick Bosa. One seeds. Yeah, one, one seeds. One seeds. Don't pick right. TJ yeah. Watt. Yep. Got to go outside the box sometimes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we'll see what we do with our MVP picks. Maybe they're outside the box as well. All, like randomly last year. It's prediction week, and we've made our picks for everything from rookies right. of the year, playoff teams, defensive player of the year, everything. This is a big one. Taking things to another level, these are our picks for this year's MVP. We're going to take over two hours this hour. Peter and Jason. Next hour, Kyle and myself. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jamie. As always, a wonderful intro to what I think is one of the most important awards in all of sports, the MVP award. Year after year after year, we analyze and we decide what it's going to be, and it becomes a horse race throughout the season of, is this guy the MVP? Is this guy the MVP? And usually by week 17 or 18, it's unanimous. We know who is going to be the MVP. And in recent years, it's basically been a quarterback award. Mm-hmm. Quarterback wins MVP, and then the skill position player with a bunch of yards wins NFL Offensive Player of the Year. No one ever remembers who the NFL Offensive Player of the Year is. <laughs> it is the Susan Lucci of awards in that, yeah, it's around, but we got to wait and wait and wait, and then finally maybe you win it, and who cares if you do? I... I'm looking at Prediction Week 2023 and see a NFL filled with amazing quarterback play. Mm-hmm. Justin Herbert's going to be awesome this year. Jalen Hurts, awesome. You go down the list, Josh Allen, Burrow, Mahomes, all these quarterbacks are going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. So what if we get a truly, truly, truly unique and special season out of a non-quarterback? Go on. Am I bold enough to pick the first non-quarterback to win MVP in more than 10 years? I think I am. What if his team is the number one seed in his conference? And what if this player does it all for an offense that has a potential question mark at quarterback? Ladies and gentlemen, my MVP for 2023 was the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy, (laughs) was the second running back selected in his draft, and was the runner-up for the NFL Offensive Player of the Year when he had 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving. Ladies and gentlemen, He might not be in your top 30 in all of your websites or who's going to win MVP, but the most valuable player of the 2023 season is going to be Christian (laughs) McCaffrey. McCaffrey. I think the 49ers are the one seed in the NFC, (laughs) and I think McCaffrey is the engine that drives them there. If you're going to win MVP as a running back, you better run for 2,000 yards or go 1,000 and 1,000 with 100 catches. It's all possible for this dude. I've got McCaffrey as the MVP of the league. Despite this being a quarterback award, you have to be that good, Mm -hmm. that historic, Mm. and I can see it in this offense. You guys said it earlier on the show, Kyle Shanahan has been in the lab. We're talking about a mad genius. Mm -hmm. And he's been drawing up a positionless offense, including Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk. And I think this guy is going to be the man this season. When it's all said and done by the end of the year, it's going to be undeniable. Yes, we love our quarterbacks. They can all go for the Offensive Player of the Year award. MVP, Mm. McCaffrey. Way to go, Peter. Very good, Peter. Take a shot. MVP, McCaffrey. I like it. Take a shot. Took a shot. I I love it. it. Shrakes (laughs) took a shot. He chose his MVP. McCaffrey might obviously get selected for the Offensive Player of the Year because, like Strake started out, the MVP is awarded to the quarterback. Mm. That position is the one who wins it. And often, it's about a quarterback that has a little bit of a storyline going into the season. Something changes. Maybe his team moves up in the first round and drafts a quarterback out of nowhere, a la Aaron Rodgers. He goes out there, puts two MVP seasons together. But then maybe it's a guy like Patrick Mahomes last offseason. All we talked about, Tyreek Hill is gone. Mm -hmm. How in the world is Kansas City going to be able to win without him? Patrick Mahomes was like, hey, I got an idea. Just let me cook. He figured it out. The quarterback position, the most important role on the football field. Touch the ball every single play. 
So look at the quarterback position. You got guys get paid this offseason. You had Lamar Jackson get paid. Mm -hmm. We saw the saga that happened with him. Jalen Hurts gets paid. We see Justin Herbert gets paid. Why not have one of these guys get the big paycheck, take the next leap, win MVP, take the entire league by it. storm? That is why, for me, this season, the MVP will be a guy that we talked about all offseason. What is he going to do? It is a guy that rocks the purple. Yo! It is Lamar Jackson, yeah. MVP <laughs> of the season, winning his second one. There are only 10 players yeah. in NFL history to win multiple wow. MVPs. Lamar Jackson will enter the conversation. There's a lot of young bucks out there that are just too young for a Randall Cunningham. They just missed out on the Michael Vick. But yeah. you know what? You showed up just in time Ooh. for this guy. Mm -hmm. Remember when he got the tag, but it wasn't exclusive? Yeah. The next hour, this team, that team, this team, that team, they're all out on Lamar Jackson. Teams with terrible quarterbacks didn't even take a look at Lamar Jackson. Well, you know what? He's coming back with Let's a go. vengeance. He has weapons around him. He has a new offensive coordinator in Todd Munkin, and I cannot wait to see whether it's Zay Flowers, the rookie of the year offensively, or Odell Beckham or Mark Andrews, guys getting the rock. Hand it off to J.K. Dobbins, Lamar Jackson, MVP. Him and his mom on stage at NFL Honors. I'm here for it. There's your new MVP. Way to go, Jay! Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Beautiful. Up there with Jason beautiful. Peter. We want to take a look at those okay. jerseys. Let's go. These All are right. beautiful when, jerseys. When, I always like to know, when did you guys lock in? When did you decide? When did I decide? Um, Get together. I don't know. I just started thinking. I started Photoshoot. coming up with it as I'm, I got a smile and talking. Oh, you're right. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> and I just smile. felt really good about my I like pick. that. I think it Lamar looks good. It's like a new color you, on But the, do you see the, the, the eight? Yeah, and the, the pants. pants. I, I didn't really think about this like this, but I still look good. Uh -huh. I could do it, man. I got it. Just give me the rock. I'm ready to go. Peter, uh -huh. okay, okay. we'll Proud of you guys. Look soft good. Soft Christian McCaffrey and Lamar Jackson. Hold out. I really am. Um, the time has finally come, everybody. All week we've been celebrating Prediction Week on the show, making our picks for Rookie of the Year, MVP, what teams are going to be in the playoffs. We go deep here. And now this is the big daddy okay. of them all. My hands are sweating. Um, I'm not going to rap for you. I haven't come up with a haiku or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you how the last month of my life has gone in picking my Super Bowl matchup and champion. Yes. This year I did it differently than I did last year. Last year when we started on the show – I was like a newborn bird coming out of an egg. I mean, that shell cracked. I had, no, I was blinded by the lights in the studio. I took off my, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was not prepared. I worked backwards this year. I picked matchup and then I picked playoff teams. I worked towards what I knew in my heart and soul was gonna show up in Las Vegas. I have to apologize to Las Vegas to CBS, to the markets of Dallas or New York, uh -oh. you're not in. Oh, you're not in. I'm so sorry. Your viewership is not going to explode. Oh, sure. I know. It's too bad. <laughs> no one's going to watch Super Bowl. It's true. They might because I have a rematch oh. in mine. Oh. I have a rematch in mine. Oh. It's from the late 80s, but it's still a rematch. It still counts. Why don't you just show them my matchup? I don't like to bury the lead. Yeah. I got the Bengals and the 49ers. Oh, baby. Super Bowl matchup. Right. This is what I felt. I felt this from early August. I tried. I had these little cards at my house. I was holding them up against Eagles next to 49ers. No, I still think they're going to be better in January. Oh, 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 Mahomes, Chiefs, Bengals. I think Joe Burrow is going to make this thing really interesting. I kept coming back to the Bengals. Then we're hearing from professionals in our industry. Chris Collinsworth comes on the show and picks the Bengals. Sure. Collinsworth played in the Super Bowl in January of 1989 Ooh. when the San Francisco 49ers beat the Bengals. That was an awesome Super Bowl. I watched the highlights from that one. Pretty cool. It was really cool. Joe Burrow I covered in his time at LSU, his two years. This guy was made to be an NFL quarterback. The story here is immaculate. We haven't seen the contract come down yet. It's due. I think he, it's coming down the pipe. The defense got better. They were in the Super Bowl a couple mm -hmm. years ago. This team feels made for it. There's a lot of question marks with this team, with San Francisco. There's something about this classic logo, as Kyle would say, in Kyle Shanahan, a lot of us trust. Mm -hmm. He's creative, he's fun. His roster is insane. <laughs> Frankly, I was gonna stress out our production a little bit yesterday, and I was gonna change my mind. I was gonna change my mind. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna wear my jersey, I'm not gonna do the reveal, yeah. I'm just gonna have to go here because I think I'm gonna flip. But then something happened. The 49ers committed financially to somebody that I uh, truly, truly believe in. Okay. 
So I think the San Francisco 49ers there it is. are going to win Purdy. the Super Purdy. Bowl. Purdy. I think Brock Purdy wearing Dan Marino's number. Yes. Mr. Irrelevant. That is the only time you'll hear me say his name on this show like yeah. that. Will become, I will say it, relevant in Super Bowl history. Brock Purdy will be a Super Bowl champion with Nick Bosa on his side with that beautiful smattering of crazy offense that you see from Kyle Shanahan. I think the 49ers make it back to Las Vegas. I think they're going to beat the Bengals. I am so sorry, Bengals. I didn't want to do this to you. I actually love the storyline of coming together a few years after you lost in the Super Bowl, of, be, of emerging from the AFC. The AFC is absolutely going to trounce each other. It yep. is just going to – I mean, this is what it's going to look like on their way to the AFC. People are just scratching and right. clawing at each other. Niners win. 49ers that are coming up. Mm. Jamie, I think you took Jim Nance's line from when they win about the relevance and the irrelevance. He's I know. Right now, right? He's so creative, Kyle. Sorry. He's you so got, creative. Great job. Great job. Great job. Thanks. You're up. You're, you're Niners. Good. Niners. Niners have beaten the Bengals twice in Super Bowls. There we go. Wow. This will be third time yep. they did the there job. There goes our story. Yep. I love it. This is why we do this. <laughs> the <laughs> Super guess. Bowl. That is what it's all about. The journey, the role that it takes to get to that game is a tough one. There are roadblocks. There are detours. There are so many obstacles that stand in your way to reach the pinnacle of our profession. But when you do, when you get there, when you win it and the confetti falls and your mom's doing angels in it, and your kids are there, and you're up on that podium, that is what it's all about. And you're looking down at that Lombardi, and you remember those days in Pop Warner football, high school, college, that got you to that moment to reach it. And there are going to be two teams that finally get a chance to be there in that game. One team has the most playoff appearances in NFL history, tied with 35. This is a team that had a long time waiting to get back to this moment, the last time they were there were many, many, many years ago. A time in our United States where there were songs like Macarena atop of the Macarena. billboard. I want to know, know if <laughs> Kyle knows the year that that was. Doesn't matter. There was songs like Bone Thugs and Harmony, Crossroads. Those were the songs that topped the billboard. This is a team that have made some additions, that have some of the same faces there in new roles that are going to make a lot of headway. On the other side, there's a team that have had storylines all offseason. They have been in a Super Bowl before. They have won two of them. The two times they've been there, they've been champions. Will they be able to get there again? Oh. The last time was in 2013. Katy Perry was rolling roar uh when they were in the Super Bowl. My matchup are two teams that have quarterbacks that are talked about sometimes in negative ways, sometimes become a punching bag. My matchup for the Super Bowl this year in Las Vegas, please tell the fine folks sitting at home. Boom! 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 Wow. Yes! Dallas! America's team, you have made it. Since 96, you are back in the playoffs, oh Mike gosh. McCarthy has figured out a way to get it done. John Harbaugh and McCarthy, two head coaches that have won Super Bowls in their past. They know how to get it done, and they are leading the charge to have their teams back. Lamar Jackson, you have had one hell of a year. You've won the MVP, and you have led your team. Odell Beckham, you are back, and you are better than ever. Zay Flowers, you've been the offensive rookie of the year, and you have helped lead this charge. J.K. Dobbins, you've led your team to the Super Bowl, and you are going to be paid for it. Dallas Cowboys, you guys have one hell of a defense. You've added Gilmore. You have Micah Parsons up front. Tony Pollard is now RB1. Mike McCarthy has proved that he is the play caller that he needed from the beginning. Ooh. It wasn't Kellen Moore. <laughs> he just needed to step up. These are the teams, but there can only be one. Talk about it. One team walks out with the confetti falling and heads down. One team is there, and <laughs> yes. they are dancing, and they are having a great time. You're a Super Bowl champion. <laughs> Cowboys, America's team, you have done it. They can make fun of you. They can talk about you. Look oh, at that dance. You're here. You're here. Mike McCarthy, do your dance. Put the chain on. Wobble with it like that right there. Because you are a champ. Hoist the Lombardi. It didn't matter. No Aaron Rodgers. Dak Prescott. Let's get it done. Dallas Cowboys, get off the floor, Kyle. And wow. celebrate. America's team, we have done it. Wow, there we go. That was <laughs> such a sell job. I just had the craziest dream that, <laughs> ah, wow, <laughs> Jason, I love it. Big I love life. it.
<laughs> Unbelievable. Jason, why? I mean, never mind the players. You went Cowboys to went, win the Super Bowl. Went Cowboys, yes. Unbelievable. Yes. They had some Great. deficiencies last year. Great. They made some moves. It's, it's their year. It is time. We talk about it all the time. Unbelievable. America's team, tune in. Watch. Watch. Peter, what do you think? Many Cowboys fans watching. This is what you want. Micah Parsons. I'm amazed. Congratulations. It's unbelievable. You're in the Cowboys <laughs> media mafia. You've done it, my friend. Yep. You yeah. are all in. That is Jason, awesome. You believe it. I'll tell you what. Your CBS bosses, they probably appreciate they it, They would too. love oh, it, too. They would love it. it. Absolutely. Um, wow. Find, find anybody else in the country, in the media, in the world who picked the Cowboys. I'm, seriously, and that's cool. You yep. might be the only it person. Is. Jamie went is. Niners over Bengals. It's awesome. These are four great teams. Thank you. Proud of you guys. Thank With you. With my Dolphins appreciate jersey it. on all my all Jason, my when did you know? Dolphins when did you know, Jason? Oh, quickly. When did you have that locked in? Uh, I had a dream. You and, had a dream. That dream. <laughs> it was that. We are just was riling that. out the awesome. rifling out that. the lines yeah. today. You're uh, on that sleep number, having that dream. <laughs> Jason's coming for you guys. Sleep the number. Back. Back. The Crystal Ball has almost been fully read here on Good Morning Football this week. It's prediction week. We have gone through the entire list. We have picked our playoff teams. Yep. We are whittling it down now today. We are announcing our own personal Super Bowl matchups. I have the 49ers beating the Bengals. Jason? I have the Cowboys beating the Ravens. Peter is still dressed like a civilian because he has yet to tell us. Yeah. And we are missing one friend here in our little lineup in front of the beautiful shield that kicks <laughs> off the 2023 season tonight. And that is one, Kyle Brandt, it is your turn. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Peter. And good morning, everyone at home. I, um, I'm feeling very content this morning. I'm relaxed. I'm at peace because I would like to announce my retirement. I am out of the game. I am retiring from screaming predictions about the Buffalo Bills. I get it. It does not work. I don't need you to remind me. I will self-report. I don't need freezing cold takes. I don't need you Mensas out there to send me old videos of me and say, this aged well. I know, they've aged terribly. I have those already. I have those videos. So why am I retiring from coming on the show and screaming about the Bills? The game doesn't work. Every time I play it, it doesn't work. Go ahead and take your pick. I'll provide them. You got to mount up! You got to mount up! It's the Bills Mafia! Mount up! You're going to the Super Bowl! Get this out of here! None of this on paper stuff! On the field, it will be won! Buffalo takes over Los Angeles! Start the parade! This pick is the only pick who will win the Super Bowl in his rookie year! With the 89th pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl 57 champion Buffalo Bills select my man, Terrell Bernard. I hold in my hand the most important Super Bowl pick of the entire year because it's the only pick that was delivered five months ago Prepare the tables, my friends, because with the fourth pick of the 2022 Good Morning Football Super Bowl pick extravaganza, I select my men, the Super Bowl 57 champion, Buffalo Bills. Give me that hat. Hey! 31-29, Buffalo, Mafia, mount up. We'll see you in Atlanta. No, we won't. We will not see you. Those are all wrong. It was a really great run, and I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed screaming for the people of Buffalo, and they've been incredibly friendly, and it's just amazing. But I'm done. I am completely done. I am going in a different direction this year, guys. I am not screaming about the Buffalo Bills winning the Super Bowl, but you bet your ass I am picking them to win the Super Bowl. This is a, calm, this is a Dawson Knox jersey. This is a member of a team. Not the face of a city, and that's how this team will win. Not just because of Josh Allen, because of James Cook, Osiris Torrance, Mitch Morris, Terrell Bernard, Christian Benford, Reed Ferguson, Sean McDermott. I'm going to keep it quiet. I'm going to keep it quiet. Everybody's abandoned the Bills. Nobody likes you anymore. Yesterday's news, windows closed, break up the team. It's fine. In fact, it's better than fine. It's perfect. No yelling. No Zubaz, no wings, just wins. But this is between us, guys. This is just us. We're just talking. Don't scream about it. Don't talk about it. Don't tweet it. Just believe it. But in the meantime, I will toast it. 
I will toast it right here on this set. Josh Allen told me he has a special bottle of bourbon set aside for when Buffalo finally wins a Super Bowl. I've got some right here for finally, finally getting my Super Bowl prediction right. And I don't need to wait. Cheers, Buffalo. Bills 31, Eagles 30. Tyler Bass walks on the game-winning field goal, and he splits it. Right down the bleeping middle. Drop the confetti, see you in Vegas. Plan the parade and pray for the tables. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that feels good. Are you okay? Not supposed to the, scream. The keep eight, it quiet. Keep eight, it quiet. You're right. The 8.35 a.m. The apple bourbon. juice hits different. Okay. Guys. It's the thank you to the Mott's family and everything. But guys, uh, it's over, it. Kyle. It's, it's done. Yeah. The whole window. It's a, it, we're supposed to move on. The Jets, the Dolphins, the yeah. Patriots. So p please do. Please move on. Yeah. Everybody's moving on. Rogers this, Burrow this, Mahomes this. It's fine. Nobody loves you anymore. You're abandoned. You're a little orphan buffalo. No one loves you. You just got your little flea-ridden dog, mm -hmm. and you're in the orphanage, and no one wants to take you home. Daddy Warbucks is coming. I promise. And he's got bourbon. That's hey. it. Even when I try not to scream, I still end up yeah, screaming. Yeah, I, I, get too like, I actually I get wish we would have excited. had a heart rate monitor yeah. on you during that segment because I swear it would have been like, spike, 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 and bring it back down. Spike, 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 bring it back down. Buffalo, baby. I Buffalo. Just love, I just love the Reed Ferguson, the long snapper. Like, it's, it's a team. We need a season out of Reed Ferguson. Love that. I want perfect snaps. Jason, Cyrus I'm glad you noticed. Yes. This is great. I have the Bills over the Eagles 31 to 30. The yep. Eagles get back. They lose again. Buffalo, it's nice that someone gets the consecutive Super Bowls and losing. It's not you. I like Buffalo. I love Dawson Knox. I love the whole team. I'm not going to scream. Thank you for the apple juice, guys. Bills over Eagles 31. I love it. And one of them will be the Super Bowl champion this year. It has all come down to this. All week, we've been celebrating Prediction Week on the show, making our picks for Rookies of the Year, MVP, which teams will be in the playoffs. But now it's time for the most important one of them all, the Super mm. Bowl matchup and the champion. Everyone else has made their picks, and now it is my turn. See, I come with... Zero humility today. Okay. I say this with clarity and a touch of arrogance. See, in life, I'm not great at many things. But when it comes to picking my Super Bowl winner each year, I'm not just good at it. I'm freaking great. <laughs> they say to come correct and come with receipts. So I want to thank my public relations team of producer David Zippolo and editor Brian Wadsworth for this little trip down memory lane. <laughs> the Chiefs finally get over the hump, finally get into the Super Bowl, and I think Andy finally gets a chance to go and go face-to-face -face with another coach other than Bill Belichick in yeah. the biggest game of his career. Super Bowl 54. 50 years the Chiefs have waited to get to this point. Guess who I have representing the National Football Conference in the Super Bowl? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bucks are the Super Bowl champs. How about them Bucks? This year's Super Bowl champion feature a quarterback who has yet to win an NFL playoff uh -oh. game. No! I'm taking the Los Angeles Rams to take this thing home and this guy to cement his place in NFL history. The Los Angeles Rams are world champions. The winner of Super Bowl 57 in Glendale, Arizona this February will be Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs, led by linebacker Nick Bolton. Oh, yeah. The ball's out. He kicks the ball. It's picked up by Kansas City for the second time in four seasons. The Lombardi Trophy has a red and gold reflection. Folks, I've got the script. <laughs> Chiefs, got it. Bucks, got it. Rams, got it. Chiefs again, got it. <laughs> I said in August last year that second year unknown linebacker Nick Bolton was going to make the play of the Super Bowl and his team would be hoisting a second Lombardi in four years and it exactly happened that way. Is this a victory lap? No, that's not what this is. I don't need that. I know it in my heart. I am that good. It is a plea. A plea for you, the viewer, to air out everything else, to ignore every other pregame show, to just take what my co-hosts have said and disregard them. Wow. <laughs> and to take my word. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 49ers will be the number one seed in the NFC this year. Okay. Season. They'll get their revenge from a year ago and they'll beat the Eagles in a hard-hitting NFC championship game. Wow. 
The Cincinnati Bengals will be the number one seed in the AFC, but like the Bengals did to the Chiefs in Arrowhead two years back, Kansas City will come into Cincinnati and break the Bengals' hearts in their building this year in the AFC Championship oh my game. Gosh. So it'll be 49ers versus Chiefs in Vegas. And as specific as I was with Nick Bolton a year ago, I will be specific on this one as well. The winner with the exact score being 34 to 28, remember that now, 34 to 28, and with second year cornerback, Trent McDuffie returning a pick six late in the fourth quarter. The Kansas City Chiefs will yet again <laughs> be your Super Bowl champion. Folks, I will see you at the parade. Oh. And I will wear back to back my Chiefs gear because I'll tell you this. What do you got? They might not have Chris Jones. Okay. Mm -hmm. They might not have Kelsey tonight. They might not have a lot of things, <laughs> but when it comes down to it, they've got a dynasty. <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs are the team of our generation, and they're not giving up that torch just yet. Kansas City Chiefs will win the Super Bowl yet again. They're back-to-back -back years. They are the dynasty of the 2020s. Hey! Talk your bleep, Peter! Talk it! Wow. Peter, it must wow. feel so good. We got to join you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it... it Look like a that was a whole segment line. of you just talking and talking and preaching and proving. And Feel changing good? outfits like Feel nine good? times. You had, you had 32 teams away from Peter. I Let like how you something. told us the path, too. This is going to happen. Um, here's the truth of the matter. I'm never wrong. Mm. Talk about it. Look at that man. You think that man's wrong? Mm. I'm never wrong. Mm. Anyway. What was the name of that cornerback again? Trent McDuffie. Duffy. Washington. Yeah. Where's Rookie. his jersey? Yeah, so the thing with the jersey is I was a little late on responding to the email and being like, I want cool. a Trent McDuffie. So Pull back the curtain. It don't matter. You, you called it today. McDuffie. Today. Dynasty. Dynasty. It's amazing. Dynasty. We got our four teams. That we got video a complete is so set. impressive. All different. Um, there it is. Beautiful. All different. All different. 49ers over the Bengals. That's my voice. Jason? I have the Cowboys over the Ravens. Yes, Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy getting it done. Well, Peter told the world to disregard our picks. So disregard. who cares what I have or Jamie has, Jason has. Peter Sam episode, I get it right every year, even down to tiny details about plays in the Super Bowl. Nick you take Bowen. your victory lap again. I oh. want to thank again Brian Wadsworth, the editor who put together that amazing montage. I will tell you this. Yes. At like the witching hour last night, I almost changed it to Lions Jets. <laughs> <laughs>